Our next question is, what does this mean, I can't do? I do things all the time, gardening, laundry, cooking. Another good question, and this is a good question because this stumbles people. People say, what do you mean I can't do? I can do. Well, what I mean by when I say that people can't do, I mean is we cannot do consistently. Of course we can do the gardening if nothing gets in our way. Of course we can do the cooking if nothing else happens to keep us from doing it. So we can do the things that we can do, but we can't do them consistently. It's easy to do something when there's nothing opposing you. For example, if you are standing here, we'll call this this point A, and you wish, and then we'll call where the lamp is over there point B, and you wish to get from point A to point B. Now suddenly you've got a problem because everything in between point A and point B is now an obstacle. It's something that can keep you from getting from point A to point B. You have to navigate around the chairs. You have to navigate through the people. You have to navigate. You have to find a space. You have to find a way to get from point A to point B. Whereas point B was just a lamp a little while ago. But it's when you set it as a goal, when you set it as an aim, is when you set it as something you wanted to get to. Then everything between point A and point B became obstacles. They became things to overcome. This is what doing and not doing is about. We say, oh, I can do that. Well, yes, you can do that until you then set it as your aim. But when you set it as your aim, you find out that all the obstacles then arise. What were just chairs and people and things before are no longer chairs and people or things. They're now things that are going to keep you from getting to your goal. When I say we can't do, what I mean is we can't really... We can't really, we haven't learned how to see second force. And second force is the force that resists us. It's what stops us from getting to our goal. And as soon as we set, you see, second force doesn't even appear until we set a goal. When we set an aim, when we make an aim, then second force begins to appear. But then when we step out to do something about that, then second force continues to appear. And with the same measure of valuation that we go at our aim, second force comes up with the same amount of resistance to keep us from getting to that aim. People don't calculate this because they don't calculate this. They imagine that they can do anything. People imagine that they can do all kinds of things. Well, we sent a man to the moon. Well, you didn't send a man to the moon. In fact, you didn't have anything to do with it. And if you did have anything to do with it, then you know that you didn't send a man to the moon because it took thousands and thousands of other people and other people's ideas and other people's work to in to get that process to come to fruition it wasn't you sent a man to the moon so what we may be able to do collectively may be able to do is not what you can do so yes you can do the cooking you can do the gardening you can do the, the laundry if nothing gets in your way but if you get a phone call and you have to go rushing out and the laundry's done and the cooking's done, you turn everything off and you leave. You don't do the cooking. You don't do the laundry. You go and do whatever else came up that drew you away from it. And what I'm saying is, is that we can't do, we can't set our, set our will to do something because we are not one. We are many. Because that I that wants to do that is not always going to be there. And it's not always going to be there because some other I is going to come up by whatever, whatever in life calls up a new eye. So the phone rings and it's for you, Bill. So Bill goes to the phone. So the eye called Bill goes to the phone. But then Bill gets to the phone and just as he picks up the phone to answer, Harry takes over. And so Harry answers the phone. Hello, Bill. This isn't Bill. This is Harry. Well, I called for Bill. Well, why'd you call? Well, why? Well, you got the wrong number. And so already it's all confused and you can't do because you are not there anymore. Something else in you has taken over. So the mother wants to do the laundry. The mother eye wants to do the laundry. Okay, so the mother eye starts to do the laundry. But then um, she gets a phone call from the, the neighbor. And the neighbor says, you know, it's blah, blah, blah o'clock, and you said you were going to be here to do this. But that eye forgot all about that. That eye that promised to be there and do that forgot all about that. So that eye then drops everything that mother eye wants to do, the laundry, and goes running over to the neighbor's house to do what that eye promised to do. And so this is why we can't do, because we don't have any will, because we don't have any, any one eye, one 
group of eyes that can tell the rest of them what to do. And so we are scattered because whatever comes up in life then drags us this way or drags us that way and we lose track of whatever it is we set out to do. Oh yeah, I was going to point B over there to the lamp. I forgot all about that. I got to talking to this person over here and I forgot all about it. How many times have you been in a room and you, you walk into a room to get something? You go to, the, you go to the, the pantry or you go to the kitchen to get something and you stand there going, what did I come in here for? And you want to tell me you can do? I don't think so. A little self-observation will see that that is an illusion that we live under. Answer your question?